Cutaneous T cell lymphoma, or known as CTCL, is a rare form of skin cancer. And basically, the patient's immune cells, in this case T cells, infiltrate the skin. When these T cells infiltrate the skin, they can produce a rash, and many times the rash is itchy. But that can also become patches, many times tumors, uh, in, and in some instances can also take over all the skin or the organs. The most common presenting symptom for the patients referred uh, universally is itching. So many of these patients have a history of years of having uh, this uh, eczema, and which is how it primarily behaves. Um, many of those patients have uh, been on and off on steroids, uh, basically creams have been prescribed by primary physicians, um, until ultimately they start progressing and start responding to these creams. Then, then that can become a patch. A patch is usually bigger than a small rash, um, and sometimes they also notice bumps uh, or tumors, and, and in some instances, uh, depending on how uh, itchy it is or how much they scratch the skin, it can become infected. And when it becomes infected, that's when pain also starts. Um, I'll say that that's primarily some of the symptoms. Of course, those can progress if in both the organs. Pain can happen also in the organs, but I would say primarily that's how most patients present. I would say the cornerstone for diagnosis is always going to be a biopsy. So it's basically taking a, a tissue of the skin, uh, looking at the microscope, but one of the things that I sometimes have to educate patients on is that it's just not taking the tissue and looking at the microscope itself, is that there is a process of staining at the cells. So many of those staining of the cells can take two overnights, three overnights, sometimes even a week. Um, and many times we have to go even deeper than that. We have to do something called a T cell rearrangement, which in summary means that we want to make sure that what we're seeing is a copy of the same cell, which is a cancer cell, versus just inflammation. Uh, because as I said, eczema can present just as cutaneous T-cell lymphoma. And the other thing that we're doing right now is part of the way uh, medicine is progressing is many times we have to look at the genes as well. We do something called uh, next uh, generation sequencing, which is looking at the details of what happened to that cell to change. So that's the initial part of the diagnosis of cutaneous T-cell lymphoma. In regards to the stage, uh, there are also steps to take um, because uh, cutaneous T-cell lymphoma is very complex disease. We always try to look as an oncologist as compartment. What do I mean with compartment? Compartment number one is the skin, uh, compartment number two is the blood, and compartment number three is the body, the organs. So for compartment number one, the diagnosis will be the skin biopsy and also for the dermatologist and us to look at how much of the skin is involved. That's part of the staging uh, process. In the case of the blood, not all cutaneous T-cell lymphoma has what we call blood involvement, meaning a cancer cell circulating. But those that have, they need, we need to measure them. For that, we do something called a flow cytometry. That's also part of the staging. And the last part is to look at the whole body and the organs. With that, we do what we call a PET CT scan. The PET CT scan is a very fancy scan where we basically try to look is which part of the body light up more in the scans that can tell us if the organs are involved or the lymph nodes are involved. And when we put all those together, that's how we become with an staging. It could be as early as stage one, which means that it's a mild rash, or stage four, which is just more advanced, have blood involvement usually, and the organs could also be involved. The frontline tumor option really varies. Um, as we previously talked about staging, it goes by the stage as well. Uh, we usually don't tend to say necessarily this is for stage one, two, three, and four. What we basically do is this is for early stage and this is for advanced stage. So for early stage, we usually are looking at people that has like very localized disease. So we tend to use many times topical steroids. And one of the first lines we use as an oncologist is also something called retinoids. So which is basically a, a, a derivative from uh, vitamin A. So we tend to use that. It's the same things actually people sometimes use for acne. Um, and thus helps to stop the growth of the cells. Uh, it pro produces a good relief of the symptoms. Many patients can, with early stage can be on those therapies for years. And we very well control the disease. As time passes and the disease starts progressing, that's when we start doing more what we call systemic therapy. So we have version of this vitamin A or retinoids in oral medication. So one, we 
use those, uh, one, of, one of the most known is Targetry. Uh, those, that drug also helps to control in a different level, more systemically, the disease. And of course, if the organs are involved or the, bulb, uh, the blood is involved, then we start going higher in which medication we use. Some examples of those is many times this cancer express something called CD30, which is a marker that a cancer cell has. We use anti-CD30 antibodies like brentoximab and uh, We also use other uh, modulators of, this, uh, of the cancer cells like uh, romidepsin, belinostat, uh, pralitrexate, among other drugs. And also the most important thing about this disease, which is primarily not curable, is uh, that we encourage patients to be enrolled into clinical trials. I think that that has become probably the best option for patients. Every, every time there is a clinical trial available, I would always encourage my patients to consider participating for them. One of the things that has happened lately is that on the oncology world has changed tremendously. And I think part of it is that we're learning more about biology of the disease. Cutaneous T cell lymphomas pose one challenge, which is it's a rare cancer. And when I say rare cancer, I mean that it's the same thing as me telling you go and study a dinosaur right now, you're not gonna find one. So that's how cutaneous T cell lymphoma is. It's very hard to find those patients, but that's what academic centers like MD Anderson, Sloan Kettering in New York, City of Hope in California, all those centers come together, collaborate, and try to put all the patients together to try to understand disease. When you understand the disease, then you can develop new drugs. So there are currently very exciting clinical trials going on. I will say that the most promising ones are perhaps the ones that use patient cells or someone else's cells to kill the cancer. Those are called uh, chimeric antigen receptor T cell therapies. Um, at my institution, for example, we are testing some that target a market in the cancer cell called CD5. Uh, we also have a CD70 CAR T. Um, and among other things, there is also being tested for immunotherapies, there are also being tested for targeted therapies that target a specific mutation in the cancer cell. So all I, I have to hope all these novel therapies at some point are gonna help patients with cutaneous T cell lymphoma. Uh, who knows, maybe when they say we were able to cure um, some of those patients.